Hi, I'm Delphine Gregwire, and I'm a classroom teacher, and this is Darlene Johnson, our curriculum technology specialist. And together we created this North Dakota Voices website in hopes that fourth graders around North Dakota would teach one another about North Dakota. Now I know we've had a couple little glitches, so I hope all the teachers and all the students are back online with us so that we can um, share with one another and um, take part together. Kat, we have here for you, um, I guess you know I'm always assuming everyone knows Kat because <laughs> I mentioned you and they, they seem to, but we are um, asking questions of Kat Pergens, who of course participated on The Voice and a very famous North Dakotan now. And our classrooms have some questions for you. So here we go. Okay. Okay. Um, our first question comes from Miss Miller's class in Pioneer at Pioneer Elementary in Bismarck. And they ask, what things did you do when you were 10 years old that you are so thankful now that you did then? 10 years old. Okay. So fourth grade for me, that's about fourth. That's fourth grade, yes. Um, I'm so happy that not only did I have the best teacher in the world in Scranton for fourth grade, but um, we learned all about North Dakota history that year. And I now realize, especially when I'm older, how important that was to me. Um, maybe even at the time I wasn't even enjoying it maybe that much, but it was so important later on to know all about North Dakota and all this, all the history behind so many landmarks and so many different things there and the geography of rivers and different towns and all these different facts about North Dakota that um, that I'm really happy I got that education when I was 10. Okay, thank you. Okay, another question comes from Mrs. Sheldon's fourth graders in Grimsrud Elementary in Bismarck. And they ask, what was it like growing up in Scranton, North Dakota? And if somebody was going to come to visit North Dakota, what is the one thing you would tell them they have to see or do? Okay. Um, Scranton was a really teeny tiny town <laughs> of 300 people. And growing up there was... Awesome. I mean, I didn't know anything better or anything different, so um, I loved it. But um, everybody was very friendly. We knew every single person in the town. They all knew you. They all knew where you were. But the, at the same time, they protected, you know, you. And you could go to the park and um, not worry about a thing. It was very safe. And we did so many activities, especially as a community. Uh, we all pulled together to have fun, especially in the summertime when we would have events at the park and there were so many different things that they would let me sing at when I was a little girl, even when I was five years old. Um, so I loved it and I had a really great time and I wouldn't take it back for the world. Um, but it was a very rural, rural upbringing. Um, we could ride our four-wheelers on Main Street of that town. <laughs> uh, and the one place that I went to every single year without fail in the summertime was Medora, North Dakota. And you probably know that they have a musical there every single summer and it runs from May until Labor Day. And so my family would, would go every single year. My mom even says that she took me when I was in her tummy. <laughs> uh, and so of course that's the one place that I would tell people to visit because it was so much fun for me, especially in my childhood. Um, and there were so many different things to do there. And then, of course, later on in life, I actually was in the show called the Medora Musical um, for five seasons. So five years I was in that show, and I tap danced, and I sang, and we danced with one another, and we, um, you know, sang our hearts out in that show. So that is one special place for me. Okay, and we have another question coming from Mrs. Beauchamp's uh, um, class at Century Elementary in Grand Forks. And they ask, what inspired you to start singing, and do you have any siblings, and do they sing? Yes, okay. Um, what inspired me to start singing is probably my older sister. Uh, I have a sister that's four years older than me. And she was, I mean, she came out of the womb singing. So when she was born, she started singing. Um, and she played piano at a very young age. So by the time that I was born, she was already playing piano, singing, and uh, playing our favorite records. Back in the day, we had records 
that were big, like big CDs, you know, they're big black uh, vinyl things that we played our music on. And um, so she was a huge inspiration to me to start singing. And in, at the same time, my dad is very musical. He's a singer. And my mom was the church organist for several years, and she can also sing, although she would never tell you that she can sing. <laughs> we would catch her all the time. Um, so dad always had music playing. My dad is the music teacher in Scranton, um, and still is, and this is his last year of teaching. So he, just, he took us to swing choir um, rehearsals. He took us to his choir concerts. He had marching band back in the day that he would let me come before I started school to come watch in the afternoons. Um, so my family was, was the driving force behind that. Um, and of course, when I was old enough, I started singing at three years old. My first audience was when I was four years old, and that was with my sister singing a duet. So she was, she was a really fun partner to sing with. Okay, I have one from Mrs. McKintree's classroom in Winship Elementary, and she said, they asked, what were your hopes and dreams when you were a fourth grader? When I was a fourth grader, okay, so I had a couple of different aspirations, although I was really into singing, um, but I started to play some instruments. I started playing recorder, and I already played piano by this point, and then I started playing French horn right in that fourth, fifth grade area. I started a little bit sooner than beginner's band, because I loved the French horn so much, and my dad played. Um, um, so... I loved the music side of things, but I also, in fourth grade, got into dancing because my teacher was a dancer, and she, um, one of her biggest dreams of her life was becoming a rockette. And she oh. loved the rockettes, and she was a, she was a great dancer herself. So, um, when I was in her classroom, she choreographed a lot of things that we did, and I got this whole idea that I was going to be a dancer then in that grade. So, um, which was great. It was still in the music genre too, but uh, singing, dancing, was definitely something that I was interested, and in, of course, playing instruments. Okay. This is coming from Mrs. McEntry's room too. Um, what is life like now that you're so famous? <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, so famous. I'm not sure it's so famous, but life is different, especially in North Dakota. Um, even going to the to the gas station or the grocery store or any restaurant, um, you know, people recognize me, which is something I'll probably never get used to. Yeah. Uh, but it's really fun, and it's also really cool because I get to thank all of the people that watch The Voice and and. To, to thank them for voting and supporting and watching, and at the same time just being able to thank them again for always supporting my musical journey. When I was in Medora doing the musical, you know, so many North Dakota people came, and so you know, a lot of people had known my name for years and years and years. But now I get to tell them thank you for all of that support. Um, the other thing that's different is that I get to do a lot more things. I mean, there's a lot more opportunity in front of me to. Um, to sing a lot more concert opportunities. I got to do a bunch in North Dakota in the past six months. We did a huge one in Bismarck and a big one in Fargo and and a huge one in Medora as well. Um, so those are really cool opportunities that are coming my my way. And um, the greatest thing that has come my way and how my life has changed the most is that I get to visit students just like you guys um, from all ages, from kindergarten through. 12th grade, and I get to talk to them about following their dreams and going for it and being fearless and being kind to one another, and I've met so many inspiring students, teachers, and community members um, that I've ever met in my life, and it's really inspiring to me, and it keeps me going, and it keeps me motivated to do what I love. Okay, these questions are coming from a Miss Alms class at Prairie Rose Elementary in Bismarck. And they ask, do you write your own music? And what has been your greatest adventure since being on The Voice? Okay. Yes, I write my own music. Um, but honestly, I, st I started writing poetry, and which was somewhat... I was trying to write songs when I was about a third grader. 
Um, but I really wasn't that successful in writing my own music until high school and turning a lot of those poems into actual songs. And then I never recorded anything of my own until I think I was about 22 years, 21, 22 years old. Um, so yes, I do write, and we're in the process of writing my next record, which will be coming out after, uh, probably in the spring sometime. So we'll probably have another single come out, um, and then an EP after that. So we're writing that right now, and I usually take about two days a week to really focus on that hardcore um, to get that done on a, a decent timeline. Um, but. I'll tell you one little secret about songwriting because it sounds so fantastic and, and it's so great and it really is and it's a great form of release and, and it's great to put your art down on paper but it is harder than I've ever thought it would ever be. Writing music is difficult and it takes a lot of hard work and you have to keep at it and you have to keep being creative and you have to find things to write about and you have to make people feel something so it's a really cool challenge that I take on every single week um, but I do love it um, my greatest adventure since the voice was that the next part of it right. yes um, oh my gosh I'm about to I think I'm about to go on it um, oh okay <laughs> I've done a lot of things and I've seen a lot since The Voice, but on Monday I am leaving and I'm going to the Middle East, oh. all the way across the world, on the other side of the world, and I'm performing for the men and women who are in the military over and stationed over in the Middle East. Um, at the same time, so we're seeing like we're fl flying into Dubai. You can look that up on a map. It's a re it's really far, but it's really cool. Um, and we're performing in Abu Dhabi, and that's probably a cool thing to look up to. And then we're performing in Doha, Qatar, which is a whole other country, Qatar, and it's, spe it's spelled Q-A-T-A-R. Yeah. And it's, to my knowledge, um, after researching a little bit of this, I think that one, Qatar, is the wealthiest country per capita in the world, I believe, because their population isn't that big, but they make a lot of money with oil, just kind of like North Dakota but in the Middle East. Um, so we get to perform in those places, and then I will see um, Amsterdam, Netherlands. I will see Paris, France. I will see London in the United Kingdom. And then I'm going to be in Switzerland to go skiing at the same, all in the same, oh. like, two-week span. That so was a big adventure. A big adventure. Great <laughs> adventure and a quite diverse one. Yes. These questions come from Mrs. Strauss Classroom at Grimsrud Elementary in Bismarck. They ask, how did you feel on The Voice in front of all those people? And what was your favorite song or type of music? What is your favorite song or type of music? Um, okay, uh, on The Voice, it was, let's see, it's really hard to describe because it was scary and it was fun, it was exciting, it was nerve-wracking, it was like the entire span of emotions. Like maybe if you guys could relate of maybe riding a roller coaster or going on something that makes you scared a little bit on the inside but also is fun at the same time and when you get done with it, you want to do it again and again and again. That's kind of how being on The Voice was like. Um, but I could never describe to you how nervous it made me um, to sing in front of 15 million people per week. And they always reminded you that there was that many people watching through the television screen. And um, yeah, and it was always something you couldn't ever get it off your mind, that it was 15 million people. <laughs> uh, at the same time, it, it's, it's really weird filming in front of cameras. I had never sung in front of cameras. And I'd done most of my work in live shows where there's people there. And there were people in the studio when we filmed The Voice, only a couple hundred, probably about five, six hundred um, in the studio. But there's all these cameras in front of you. And and you're not supposed to look into them, but you're supposed to perform to them, but without looking into them. So that's a very difficult thing to get used to. And and after a while, you don't really even notice them. But in the beginning, it's, it's really hard. Um, but I would never take it back for the world. It was 
it was scary every single week every single week was so scary but it was so much fun and so fulfilling when I got to be the best that I could possibly be and sing the best that I possibly could sing um, every single week and what was the second part of that question um, What's your favorite song or type of music? Oh God, that's that's I hard. Um, <laughs> hard one, big hard one. My, I grew up on um, rock music. Dad always played um, like the band Journey. Yeah. These kids are totally not going to know who they are, probably. <laughs> Journey and Madonna and um, Fleetwood Mac and Heart. Those are all my favorite bands. Fleetwood Mac probably sticks out the most as, as my favorite all-time band, and one of my favorite songs is one of Stevie Nicks' um, Fleetwood Mac song called Landslide, mm -hmm. and I got the opportunity to actually sing that on the show, and it it was really, really cool to be able to sing one of my favorite songs and one of my absolute icons on that show, um, and so I'm really glad I got to do that. Okay, um, um, Miss Nessets from um, Century Elementary in Grand Forks. Um, these kids have just been waiting for their question to appear. So, Miss Nessets, your students have asked, how did you feel when the judges made comments about your singing, and what character traits help you to be successful? Ooh, okay. How did we feel about the comments? Um, you know they were always so positive on the voice. They always, they still are. I'm watching this season, and, and they, they've always really been very positive. So, it was really cool to be standing there and having four superstars tell you that they loved the way that you sang. They loved the song. Um, it was very surreal. Uh, it felt like it was not real. You know, having Blake Shelton tell you that you're a really good singer and that he loves your voice. Um, but at the same time, we respected these superstars so much so that when they say something like that, it's like, it feels like a humongous compliment. You know, it feels like you're actually being respected with these people that, um, that do it for a living and make a lot of money and they're very famous and very legendary. Um, so it made me feel really good to get compliments from those coaches every single week and, it also honestly kept me going and it kept me positive about myself and keeping me out of that doubtful um, sort of state of mind when you're underneath so much pressure. So it was a really cool thing to not only get the compliments but to talk to the coaches every single week and get to hang out with them backstage. It was a really, really awesome experience that I'll never forget. What was the second part of that question again? Um, it was, what character traits help you to be successful? Oh, man. I'll tell you one thing that I learned about being r raised in North Dakota um, is that, and I, I tell this to all the kids that I, I speak to, that I feel like in North Dakota we really get um, a good sense of what working hard is like. Um, being a hard worker is probably the most respectful thing you could possibly be. And it's probably the most important thing that keeps you successful moving forward and keeping your goals in front of you. You have to work hard. Um, but North Dakotans have been known to be hard workers, and I'm lucky enough to have a whole family of full of hard workers. And they were farmers and teachers, and uh, even my grandmother was a music teacher. Uh, and she would still find time to take Grandpa his lunch out in the field at noon. Uh, so being a hard worker, you have to be um, a kind person. I think that's number two and very important in being successful and getting to where I am is you have to be nice. You have to be kind. You have to respect others. You have to always look up to the your teachers and look up to your elders that have the information and have tools for you to use to be successful and respect you know those people that um, that want to help you so that's those are two big things you have to be a hard worker you have to be kind and you have to really be caring you have to care about others you have to lift one another up in your journeys you have to um, 
care about your neighbor and you have to help them follow their dreams and and help them on their journey in life too. That was great. That That's really, inspiration yeah. for all of us, not just the students. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question come from Miss, comes from Mrs. McCarthy's fourth graders at Ben Franklin in Grand Forks. And they ask, what school did you go to in Scranton, North Dakota, and how many students were in your class? Okay. And the second part of their question was, if you weren't a singer, what would you do? Okay. Um, so in Scranton, there's only one building for a school. <laughs> so everybody goes to the same building from kindergarten through senior in high school. So it's called Scranton Public School. And on one side of the building is K through 6 grades. And on the other side of the building is 7 through 12th grade, um, which we sort of considered ourselves in high school when we were in 7th grade. We never really separated junior high, in a sense. Um, so Scranton High School was the place. Now, I started with nine kids in my class in kindergarten, mm -hmm. and uh, only nine. <laughs> only nine. Only nine. <laughs> and there was um, four girls and five boys. And then when I was a uh, fresh, I think I was a freshman, there was a school that was 13 miles down the road called Reader High School. Same, same thing. It's very small like Scranton. And they ended up closing their doors. So all um, those students came to our school. So then I gained six more students, uh, two, three more girls, and, um, and three boys. So that I ended up graduating with 15 kids in my class. <laughs> wow. Very small. And I remember thinking when we got those extra st six students that our classroom seemed really full. Like mm -hmm. chemistry class seemed like it was packed in there okay. because I was so used to having nine kids around me. But <laughs> I'm sorry. What was the second part of that question again? The part was if you weren't a singer, what would you like oh. to Okay, so I started college um, as a uh, music education. So I really wanted to be a music teacher just like my dad and my sister and my grandma and everybody that has their music education degree. Um, and I never finished with that degree at this point because I started working in music and doing theater and touring. Um, but I did end up with a degree in hair and makeup. <laughs> yep. I ended up going to hair school and getting that degree and I absolutely love doing hair and makeup and nails and all those girl all that girly stuff and I worked in a salon for a few years and so I'm assuming that if I hadn't pursued music uh, as hard as I did that I would probably be doing that and you know, a few years back, about five years back, I started nannying part-time and then ended up doing it full-time um, for a little while, and I absolutely loved that, too. So I guess either a music teacher, uh, a nanny, or a hairstylist. <laughs> Great. But they all go together, yeah. right? Yeah. They all go together. <laughs> so we just have, um, you know, about another, like, four or five questions, so if you could hang in there with us. Okay. okay. Okay, um, Mrs. Lindbeck's class from West Elementary in Grand Forks says, why did you choose to sing Let It Go on The Voice, and have you ever seen the movie Frozen? Yes. Okay, so like I said, I was a nanny before I went on The Voice, and I had five kids in the household, five kids. Wow. And one of the things that we did before I left for The Voice was go to see the movie Frozen. Um, and I fell in love with the movie, and so did the kids. And, of course, we sang Let It Go constantly in the household before I left. And then when I would Skype in from The Voice, we would sing together, and that's one of the songs that we would sing together. Um, I ended up watching the movie Frozen probably over 50 times. Uh, it was something that I liked to do at, at the end of the night when I was living in Los Angeles. Then I would watch Frozen as I fell asleep, and so Let It Go was just one of my favorite songs in the whole wide world, and I, I had to do it on the show, and the episode that I sang it on was dedicated to uh, the kids that I nanny. We got to choose a song that meant something to us, and so I dedicated it to those kids that I nannied. 
Oh, that's sweet. Sweet. <laughs> that's very sweet. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, um, this comes from Mrs. Walsh's classroom, and I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Mirror Elementary in Bismarck. It said, they asked, how did you earn your spot on The Voice? Oh, let's see. Um, I got asked to audition for the show. Um, is that kind of what they're asking, like, how did I get that opportunity? I think so, yes. I ended up filming a video of me singing um, in an airport. It was a weird, weird thing we just sang in an airport and we had it on video and it went up on YouTube and the producers of the show saw that video and contacted me to audition for their show because they loved that video and it was getting so many views and um, and that was how I got that opportunity which when I do my school visits and I talk to students I tell people this is a I learned a very important lesson that day because I um, I'm not so big on singing like in the middle of nowhere, but you have to take every opportunity that you possibly can. And if there's ever a piano in front of you, even if it's at an airport, you should probably take the time to sing or play, and you never know who's watching or who's going to see that. Okay. <laughs> this comes Changed from my life forever. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> this comes from Mrs. Corismo's classroom at Ben Franklin Elementary here in Grand Forks, and her students ask, "How do you? How do people re react when they find out that you're from North Dakota? When you go to all these other bigger places?" Yeah, sometimes um, I would say the most, and this is maybe a little unfortunate, but one of the most, the, the biggest questions is, "Where's Where's that?" Oh. Where is North Dakota? I had, um, I actually had a woman ask me where that was. Ask me where that was, and she said, "Is it by North Carolina?" Oh my goodness! <laughs> I know, and she was, she was an older woman too, and I, I was like, "Oh my gosh, wow!" People just don't know sometimes where the Midwest is or where North Dakota is, but, um, uh. <laughs> Well, I guess the yeah, the second comment about both North Dakota and Minnesota, where I live now, mm -hmm. is is it really that cold there? Is it really as cold as people talk about? Because it's always talked about on the news about how cold it is, and my answer is yes. It's <laughs> and we <laughs> learned the <laughs> year. <laughs> and now nowadays, actually, it's a little different because. A lot. The third comment usually is, "Oh, is that where all the oil is nowadays?" Oh. And yes, that is, and it is, and it's been on um, the news out here, you know, several times about how much um, oil is being produced there, and it's really a historic and legendary thing that's happening there. It is. Well, our final question for you actually comes from my classroom, Mrs. Gregware's classroom, and my students ask, "What are you doing now after the Voice with your scene?" Which I know you shared a little bit about what's up. Yeah. There. So, so what are you looking forward to in the future? We are um, recording this record that I'm writing, and um, we also recorded a Chris special Christmas song that hopefully will be released in the next couple of days. Stay tuned. We're trying to get it finished before I leave for the Middle East. Oh. Um, so that's really exciting because Christmas is my favorite favorite time of year, and um, and so and we're also doing a bunch of concerts. So we we spend um, the weekends doing shows in different parts of the nation. Um, this weekend we actually are in South Dakota, um, in Watertown, South Dakota, and then Sturgis, South Dakota, doing shows. And I put together an entire Christmas. I don't know what happened. That might just be it. I want you guys to get in there and see. I'm really seeing back here very well, but I hope you're not getting a lot of commotion where the camera's at because it's this being recorded for you. That's not going to be a question. I don't know why. Why wouldn't I ask somebody? Does it matter? What matters more is about her journey to get to the voice, about her writing, creating.